Lagasse here. Hey, you know how I'm always saying pork fat rules? Yeah. It really does, you know. Tonight, chicken rules. Yeah. See, they're not excited, Hilda. No, it's really been amazing, you know. Um, I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of that www.foodtv.com thing, all these emails and stuff. It's like everybody's been asking us lately about, well, what's your favorite chicken dishes? And, hey, I'm tired of the same old chicken. What do I do? So tonight, I thought I'd cook up a couple of my favorites. The first one, an inspiration from Italy. I got to be honest with you. I haven't made this dish. I got to be 10 years. I know, hard to believe. Chicken cacciatore. When's the last time you made that? Chicken cacciatore. Unbelievable, right? Kind of forget about all those simple dishes that we kind of grew up with. I mean, it was big for a long time, and then it like, there it goes. Right in the closet. There it goes. And then maybe we'll travel over to France for some coco vin. I know. Another dish I haven't done. Remember Julia Child doing that Coco Vin thing? What was it, 60s or 70s? It's a beautiful thing. It's like it happened yesterday, you know? Oh, sorry. And then we'll do a little Flo's chicken, uh, a little Southern style to uh, end it up, show you a little technique about that. It's, it's going to be fantastic. And of course, Doc Gibbs and Cliff in the house. Cause it's chicken, chicken, and more chicken right here on Emerald Live! How you guys doing, all right? All right, we're gonna go over a little bit of chicken here, as we always do. You know, we started, we started talking about the old Galinga chicken, and uh, start thinking about all the, I just mentioned a few, the inspiration of Ita Italy, Cacciatore, I don't know the last time you've made that, Coco Vin, dynamite dish, haven't had that in a while. And then you start looking around places in the world Look at this. This is jerk chicken right here. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. That's, you know, we haven't seen that in a while. Good jerk marinade. Put it in that zip thing. Shake it up a few times. Speaking about shaking it up a few times, that's... I used to have that chicken a lot, you know, shake it in that bag. And... <laughs> I've grown up now. <laughs> Fried chicken, you can't beat it, right? I mean... You, got, you can't beat it. Either oven fried or regular fried, fantastic. That was a poll winner on the old WW dot thing. How many people? Chicken salad. Yeah, I had that for lunch today. Unbelievable. Chicken salad. I like it kind of spicy, though. You know, I don't like all that mayonnaise you bite into it. You know, it's got that drip thing going on. It's like that gum, you know? You know. Anyhow. I was saying about oven fried. This is what, what this is right here. It's a little oven fried as opposed to uh, frying it in the old fryer or cast iron pot. This is actually, you bread it real lightly, season it, and then you blast it in the oven with a little uh, olive oil on the pan. Good way to fry chicken there. Of course, a couple of hunks of cornbread is always good for those calories you saved while you oven fried it, you know? <laughs> chicken and chicken liver pate made the pole. Unbelievable. We'll keep them around. The uh, barbecued chicken. Got to be one of them backyard American things. And uh, whole roasted bird. We'll talk about that later on. And of course, up there are my friends in Buffalo, the creators of the old chicken wings, right? Right? Little chicken wings. Nothing like a good chicken wing, you know? All right, let's get right down to business here. 
I'm going to uh, just take a whole fryer chicken or one of those hens. want to make sure, of course, working with chicken, wash your hands, you know. <laughs> no, really, seriously, on a serious note, when you're working with, ch with chicken, you got to wash it real good. you got to keep your hands, your cutting board, everything that, uh, you, that you touch it with. Regular flour, all-purpose flour. It's not seasoned, though. That's why it's not happy. <laughs> Add a little bit of seasoning in there, and you can see really, really close. See? It is super happy right now, as you can see. Okay? Happy. Go to the butcher, you go to the store, do it yourself. I took the chicken. I'm, I'm keeping the bones on mine. I like the bones. Adds great flavor. I got it in eight pieces. So what I'm going to do now is I've got to season this chicken up. Okay? Even though we're going to Italy, we've got to season it up. Salt, pepper, whatever. All right. Now what we're going to do is this. I'm going to dredge it in this flour right here. And then... While we're dredging it, we're going to put this on about medium-high heat. And we're going to take some olive oil, good bit of olive oil. It's going to absorb some. What we're going to do is we're going to shake off the excess flour on these chickens. And we're going to start, yeah, shake off. That's what that means. Shake it off. Okay, we're going to dredge it in flour. These eight pieces here. I'm actually kicking the heat up now to high. All right. Seasoned chicken. Shake it off. Saute it in the olive oil. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this chicken cacciatore. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs, everybody. and Cliff, everybody. How about giving it up for Rhoda for that special, special swing? If you're just joining us, welcome. I'm Emeril Lagasse. We did that www.foodtv.poll contest for chicken. We saw some of the favorites. Got one of my favorites in here right now, chicken cacciatore. So what we did is after we did that, we browned in the flour. You see what we did? We're just browning it in that olive oil like that. And then you can get your in other ingredients together while you're doing that. Now, once it starts browning, we're going to take it out of there. And then we're going to start like the sauce. What's in the sauce? We got some onion. We got garlic, of course. We got some mushrooms. You can use button mushrooms. I got a little shiitake mushrooms. Chopped tomato. Combination of either that or sauce you could use, depending on how much time you have. It's a food of love thing. Got to have a little vino, right? And then I got a little bit of stock. Salt and pepper, of course. And I got some fresh herbs, some bay leaf. A little bit of thyme and some basil. Now, you know, since it's a pole thing, how many people, first of all, make chicken cacciatore here in the audience? Right? You do? Seriously. Okay. How many people don't really care? I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be the other late night show. Who uses green bell pepper in a chicken cacciatore? Who doesn't use green bell pepper? So it's a, I guess it's a kind of a taste thing. Yes. yes. Do you use it in yours? You use it in yours. 
We're not using bell pepper right now. That's it. So now what we're going to do, there's the answer, Joe. We're going to take the chicken out once it gets brown. I couldn't really remember on that pole thing what people, I don't remember seeing a lot of bell pepper in there. Saw the mushrooms and the onions and garlic. Everybody had wine in it, though. So look, keep the olive oil in there. Next step, onions. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of salt to that and some pepper. <laughs> One or two minutes, saute the onion. See, we call that in Louisiana. You see how we're scraping that down? We call that the gradinius. Take that right off. We love all that stuff. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add the mushrooms now. Now, this is when you don't panic. Because, look, the mushrooms have been in there for 10 seconds. They about drank all the olive oil dry. Look, because they're like a sponge. But like I said, don't panic. It's going to be okay. You can always just add a little bit more olive oil if you need it in there. Okay? It's dried up. Add a little olive oil. All right, we're going to cook the mushrooms for about three, four minutes. Now, add a clove or two of garlic, right? Or all 40 of them in there, you know? That's a new dish. It's called chicken galatori. It's a beautiful thing. Now, I'm going to add the tomato. I'm going to add a little bit of the sauce, too. Yeah, if you got fresh tomatoes, great. If not, look, you use some of the whole tomato that you can buy, good quality, some of the sauce. White wine. It's supposed to add just like a splash in there, you know? You add the bay leaf, the basil, the thyme. Kick it up a couple of notches. This was the other thing, too, on that pole thing, right? Some people used red wine. Who uses red wine in their cacciatore? Who uses just white wine? It's close. Who uses no wine? Okay. <laughs> you have seen the exit signs, ma'am, right? <laughs> you know, anyhow, after the wine, some stock, chicken broth, chicken stock. See, ah. Uh. <laughs> Woke up, I had one of them cacciatore heads. <laughs> Once that simmers, few minutes, put the chicken in there, put a lid on it. Turn the heat down to medium, let it do the love thing. Okay? It's going to simmer. Chicken's going to get looser. That wine's going to go in. Chicken's even going to get looser like that, you know? When we come back, another night. Stick around. Stop it. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse, Chicken Rules tonight. And uh, before we get into our next dish, I just kind of wanted to uh, give you a couple of tips. Got one of those uh, emails that keep popping up that I want to share with you all. But look at this. Look at this cacciatore. 
You want to let that simmer like that, folks, for about a good two hours would be great. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this in a second. Cover it up, food of love thing. The other thing we kept getting a lot of, um, you know, that dot, dot, e you know, mail thing. <laughs> People were talking about, like, you know, when they're in a pinch, when they're home and they got the kids and moms and dads and everything else, and, you know, they, they don't usually just take pasta and cook it a la minute, which means to order inside of salted water in a pasta pot, take it out, and serve it. Sometimes you can do that, sometimes not. Sometimes what happens is that you got to uh, cook it ahead of time, chill it down, rinse it, and then how do you get it from not sticking? You add a little bit of oil to it like this, you see, and toss it. And then you can just keep it in the ice box or in one of them bags, and when you're ready to get your stuff together, it's uh, you know something that you don't have to really call 911 about and worry about that over there. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how the easiest way to bring this pasta up as well and finish it. Before I do this, www.foodtv.com, and this is from Linda from Philadelphia, which we appreciate all of the emails. Here, check it out. It says, Dear Emerald, when uh, roasting chicken, is it better to keep the skin on it? And uh, Linda, all I can tell you is that I've done a lot of roasted chickens, and uh, I, I personally think it's best to keep the skin on it keeps the chicken moist. Uh, it really doesn't have all that much calories when you start cooking it and all that stuff. And I'm not a, uh, you know, a medical guy here, but uh, I can tell you, it keeps the chicken moist. That I can tell you. And uh, I love, personally, I love the skin. I love when you roast it, slow roast it for a good hour and a half, two hours, that nice chicken, cut it down like that. Basically, it's, uh, it's almost gone. So if you are watching that, you know, calorie thing, then maybe you want to take the skin off. But for me, it, I really like, uh, love the skin of that. Now, let me show you. You take a little bit of wine, or you can take a little bit of agua, or you can take a little bit of both. You just put a little bit like this inside of the skillet. Then if you have, so yeah, take a little bit of basil. Flavor that water like that. Take a little bit of salt. Flavor the water, because, you know, it doesn't come out seasoned. Same thing. Let's turn this puppy down. My eyebrows are about ready to explode. <laughs> Little salt and pepper like that. That's the first step, okay? See how I'm doing here? I'm just sort of infusing that. Now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add my pasta to this, which is al dente already, which means, you know, it's not like mush. So if I wanted to just keep it an olive oil type pasta, what I mean is, is that I didn't want to cover it with some sort of sauce, okay? Then very easy. This is where you get some good olive oil, season it like that. You can just do it like this. Or if you wanted to use the sauce, what you could do is you could always hit it with a little bit of this top of the sauce from the cacciatore like this, you see? Really light like this. And then you can really... Not only give it a little flavor, but you don't have to panic trying to do too many things at one time. Now, finish it like this with a little more basil. Okay? And then what you should do now is use your tongs. And what you do is make sure it's not sticking. You've got enough moisture. Use your tongs and fold it over and then re-season it. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my tongs, toss it like this. Make sure it's all tossed nice, nice. Okay? Re-season it. Then it's simple. It's heated. You put that on your base for your family like such. Okay? I certainly, what I like to do first with the pasta, I like to hit it with the nice grated cheese like this. Okay? Then we'll take our platter close to us like this. We'll take out our cacciatore like such, add a little piece there, add a little piece over here. You know what I'm saying. Let me show you what I like to finish this. It's the chicken's falling off the bone, because cacciatore means hunter style. I mean, this is like a peasant dish. It should be like that. Right at the end with all the sauce, that's when you can go back. 
over your pasta like this. All the nice mushrooms and stuff, you see? And that's when you can finish it. Garnish it really, really simple. A little more Parmesan cheese like that. Maybe a little bit of parsley like this. A little bit of uh, chives. For me, it's a little bit of spice like that. Bam! Chicken cacciatore. There you go, all right? Is that all right with everybody? These kind of pots over here, you could get this like it's called these Dutch ovens like this. I like them. What I did is I took, you can use pancetta, you can use bacon. I use a little bit of country bacon since we're going to take you over to France right now. And what I did, I made these, they call these la dens, in a big fancy word. So I took them, chopped them up inside of my Dutch oven with just a tiny bit of oil and browned them out a little bit, okay? Then I got the bacon oil in there, or if you want to call it fat, call it fat, bacon oil. <laughs> so I got the lot ends, I got the bacon. Now, I got some flour, I got to season with some salt, fresh pepper, and then, uh, like Julia Child, she says, you know, when you're making this coca vin dish, you should use big chicken. I don't, you know, big chicken. I mean, there's like the big ones, you know, not those little fryers. Like, you know, not quite a capon, but, you know, a rooster, I guess, right? <laughs> you know what I mean. You want to season the chicken. Then what we're going to do now, I'm just using these leg pots. That was another thing on that dot, dot thing. People were confused about what they should do with these. My first choice was we take the bone out and stuff them. Put them on a bacon thing. You know, your favorite dressing, and you could roast them in the oven. But this is a uh, vin using these legs and thighs. We're going to shake the flour off, salt and pepper. And what we're going to do is we're going to start browning up these chicken thighs. While I'm doing that, that would be a good time for you to go get, you know, whatever you need to get or something, you know, cold or, you know, <laughs> maybe a popsicle or something like that. We're going to hang here and rock out with Doc Gibbs. Stick around. We'll be right back. Gibbs, Cliff, welcome back. Emma Lagasse here. You're just tuning in. We're trying to kick chicken up a few notches tonight. Ain't that right, everybody, right? All right. Little cacciatore is done right now, and now we started browning our chicken thighs, legs and thighs, for this next dish, the classic Coco Vin. See, we're going to get nice color like that. you got to give it some time. You know, it's a food of love thing. You see, you got to get it brown like that. And then, give you a little ingredient rundown real quick before we start this. Some people would say, look at all the oil he's got in there, all the olive oil he's got inside there. Don't worry. Very simple ingredients for this coco vin. And it's sort of the, uh, you know, the... Peasant dish of France, you know, stewed down, just like the cacciatore is of Italy. Dynamite. Check it out. Bay leaf and thyme. Onions. Just kind of julienne. Shallots. Garlic. Got to love it. Lots of mushrooms. One time I saw Julia do this dish way back when. And I remember she used like eight buckets of mushrooms in this thing, you know? And I was like kind of scratching my head saying, Self! 
But then I got it. I mean, it was a good thing. It was a beautiful thing. So Julia rules. Absolutely. Now, once this gets browned, oh, and let me give you one of these safety things. We were just talking about this on the break. You know, you're cooking chicken. You got oil, you got chicken. Chicken has a little moisture. You know, I mean, be careful. You know, it's a common sense thing. I mean, don't be like, you know, like sticking your face in the pot like you're, you know, like you're reading a map or something, you know. And I'm not saying that you have to cook like this. But, you know, just be careful. Especially when you're moving it around. Or you could wear sunglasses. You know, you might as well get the money's worth out of those things. You can't wear them, you know, in the house. Turn a lot of extra light on in the kitchen. Put your sunglasses on when you're making cocoa vin. Why not? Now, once you get them brown, here we go. Oh, remember, I took the bacon, the lot ends, right? Started that first. I got them over here. They're getting happy. Here's what we're going to do. Next, we're going to start with some, the onions first. I like lots of them, too. Going to cook them for a minute or so. You got to season them up, a little salt. <whistles> See? See what it just did? See, it responded. If I would have had Ray-Bans on right now, you know, who cares? All right. Let the onions go for a little bit. I think we need some, like, big flavors in here. I think we need, like, big pepper, you know? <laughs> Can't take any chances. I go, like, driving around in other cities. I put this in the trunk in case I got to kick up any neighborhoods, you know what I mean? All right, now, got the onions in there for a couple of three minutes. Now it's easy. Add the shallots. Don't have shallots? Use more onion or use some red onion. I'm adding all, like, 68 cloves of garlic in here, you know? <laughs> couple of bay leaves, some fresh thyme. Smelling good. Now, it's when you add the mushrooms. Yeah, look at them. Button, regular button mushrooms. You know where mostly these grow? Down the street, you know, in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Them folks in Pennsylvania, they can grow some button mushrooms, let me tell you. Now, got to re-season the mushrooms. A little more salt. Pepper. Now, this is when uh, you not only come to the stock thing, but the wine thing. It's a matter of opinion. Who in here makes chicken stew or cocoa vin? Anybody? Do you use red wine? All the time. My kind of girl. Stick around. <laughs> Over here? Excuse me? That is a very bad corner up there. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> very, very bad corner. Jay, be careful over there. Jay, be careful. Watch out for those chicken bones, pal. You use red wine? Red wine, too. Do you use about that much? Use about that much? I use a lot of red wine, too. what I like. Use a whole bottle of red wine and about one cup of stock, you know what I mean? It's gonna be good, Hilda, let me tell you. When we come back, another night, stick around!
Doc Gibbs and Cliff. All right. Before I go into a little chicken flow, let me show you about this uh, Coco Vin real quick. You let this kind of simmer like this two, two and a half hours. But you see, it's not thick at all. It's the red wine that we added in there and the stock. French cooking, they used to call this thing called a beurre marnier. It's like a roux, except they don't cook it. It's made with butter and flour. And they would mix that at room temperature to form sort of a light paste and add that into dishes, beurre marnier, to thicken them and before they would serve them. So I'm going to show you that beurre marnier thing in a second, but let me start this next chicken flow. Check this out. First thing we got to need is a little pot. We got to get our chicken that's well rinsed. You take the fryer in there, rinse it really good, put it inside the pot. Add some onions, celery, carrots. I love this. When I make chicken salad, I do it the same way. Five, six cloves of garlic in there, right? Then, got to season it. A little bit of salt. Nice pepper. You want it spicy, you can add cayenne pepper if you want. Now, turn the pot on. Wow. <laughs> then what you do is you cover this with water. Nice, nice, gingerly. Cover it up. If you bring it to a boil, you let this simmer, depending on the size of the chicken, around an hour and a half. Just when that chicken's going to stop falling off the bone. You with me so far? Yeah. All right, there'll be a test at the end of this. <laughs> now, chicken comes up to a bone, you take the chicken out, you strain this, strain all the vegetables. Now you've got an unbelievable chicken stock. You can use a little of it, freeze some of it when it cools down properly, put it in little containers. Perfect. But then also, you got this like really moist chicken that you uh, got from, from doing this method. So if you want to make chicken salad, chicken scallopini, whatever you want to do, that's how you do it. Now, let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to take some butter, and I'm going to take some onions and celery. A couple of good ingredients. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to saute these with a little bit of salt and some cayenne pepper, okay? A couple of bay leaves, some fresh thyme. If you want to strip it, good. If you don't, hey. Yeah, you ain't going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> Saute it up like that. Then I got some fresh sage and some basil and parsley, some garlic, an egg, and I got some cornbread and some just day-old white bread. Watch this. Once this all gets a little tender like this, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to add the egg in here, the garlic in there, sage and parsley right in there, and I'm going to break this egg up a little bit inside of our dressing. With me so far? Yeah. Pretty good. Now, they steal everything around here. <laughs> now, this chicken stock. We're going to add some of this chicken stock to moistened Be back to moisten this bread nice and wet. Not too wet, not like, but you see that? See the consistency of that? We're going to start there. Now, this gets tender. Now what we do, add that right in there. Okay? So now we've got a little stuffing, right? Nice and wet. Now I'm going to dice up 
the chicken pieces, just like I had right here. I'm going to dice this up, and I'm going to fold that when this cools down a little bit. I'm going to fold this into like a chicken stuffing combo, wet, right? Preheat the oven. Okay, back to Coco Vinland. <laughs> that Bermanier thing, we're going to add a little flour. If you're just joining us, we're back here in Coco Vinland. <laughs> little butter, okay? Now I'm going to show you how to finish this. First thing you want to do is smooth the butter like this. What I like to do is after I smooth it like that, then I just whisk it. See how it's coming together like that? Now, just a little dab will do you. Here's how we're going to finish it. We're going to take this bourmonier like this, and we're going to add it right in here. Sometimes what you can also do, folks, is take a little bit of the stock and temper the bourmonier, and then add it right inside of that, okay? When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this and then the incredible Flo's chicken. Stick around, we'll be right back. everybody all right now you take that delicious chicken meat that you diced all up with that wet stuffing right you take an earthware dish like I have right here butter it up real good you could do this with turkey too re-season it little salt cayenne pepper whatever you like keep it good and wet put it right inside of that casserole like this 350 degrees very, very simple little chicken dish. Okay? 350 degrees. We're going to pop that inside of the oven. And I'm going to show you in a minute what that really looks like. Little butter on top if you want, kicked up. Hey, you know some of that chicken stock, you can make an easy chicken gravy that would be great with this too. Now, shh, back to Coco Vinland. <laughs> Here's how I like to serve this. For me, this Coco Vin, nice big family dish, mashed potatoes. <laughs> then, bring the dish over here. You go get all the rescue, all the chicken falling off the bone like this, you see? One over there, one over here. One right there, love that. That red wine, not too, too thick. How's that look, all right, you guys? Yeah. All right, then. See, since you got the mashed potatoes, then that's when I take the crispy bacon, you see? Just kind of garnish it like that, the rest inside the sauce. I like those lot ends like that because what I like to do, I like that gravy like that. Just kind of, you know. You guys are with me, right? All right. There you have it like that. A little bit of garnish like this, right? A little bit of chives. Bam! There you go. Coco Vin. All right. This is one of those great dishes right here, this flow chicken. You got, you know, you always kind of, well, what do I do? It's for two people. This is a perfect little change right here. I would add some chicken gravy to this on the bottom that we talked about. And then you take a little bit of this chicken stuffing casserole like this. Check that out. You see that? And you serve that chicken gravy like that, particularly when the uh, weather's warm or cold for that matter. Oh. Hey, what can I say? I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow.